today we have with us Dr. Kajan Mitra, Dean for NKP uh, Salva Institute of Medical Science on our program uh, Thoughts on Education by College Dunya. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so coming to the first question, so, uh, you have held key positions uh, in your uh, educational institute throughout your professional career. Uh, what are the factors that help you uh, keep connected with the sector? Uh, after passing my MD, I joined teaching profession and I like teaching profession. So I became a initially a senior resident in uh, Nizam Institute of Medical Sciences, Hyderabad. Then I came back to Nagpur, then I joined the Government Medical College, Nagpur as a lecturer. I became associate professor and then professor. Uh, then I left Government Medical College, Nagpur and joined NKP Salvi Institute of Medical Sciences. So uh, I love teaching, therefore I am in this profession. And I was uh, head of the department of radiology in uh, NKP Salvi Institute. Uh, till 2015 and in 2015 I was given the responsibility of the team of this institute. Uh, so uh, after uh, I became dean I thought that uh, my career as a teacher has got a wider ramification uh, because uh, a dean can uh, decide about certain things, can take policy decisions uh, in teaching learning methods, in, to some extent the curriculum of the students and uh, manage the students, manage the teachers and can improve the teaching learning of, of a medical institute. So that's how I continued in this profession. Uh, that was very well answered, sir. Uh, being the Dean of the Institute, what is your philosophy of leadership and how would you describe your uh, leadership style? My leadership style is, I can say in one word, and that is inclusive. So a leader is one who creates leaders and does not create followers. That is what I believe. So thereby, when I became team, I started forming my team. So I gathered together the right thinking persons in my institute and given the, I gave them uh, various responsibilities, key responsibilities in the institute and thereby we all are, I have, I'm, I have created many leaders in this institute. So that is why my, that is how my leadership style is. So we can understand by this that you always want uh, your teammates to be working in the front uh, along with you, not you working alone and or lay, they alone working. True. So that is a very good philosophy, sir. The thing which you are following for your leadership style is uh, can be uh, great leaders uh, do that usually. So coming to the next question, sir. Uh, the education system in uh, India and foreign countries are structured very differently. Uh, in your experience, uh, what can a student gain from studying in your institute? In my institute, uh, we give uh, stress to academics. And uh, that has been our forte, uh, academic excellence. There are uh, few parts of medical education. And one is uh, uh, the teaching learning. Second is uh, research in medical field. And the third is patient care, of course. So these are very important aspects of medical education. And uh, we adopt modern technologies of teaching learning. Uh, we teach them uh, various domains. The domains are, uh, you know, uh, the first domains, the first domain is, uh, of course, uh, what the, the student understands, what he, what he imbibes in his brain. So that is the first uh, domain. The second domain is how he acquires the skill, the skill he uses his hands. So a surgeon uses his hands to do surgery. So those skills, which we know, which we call as psychomotor skills. And the third and a very important aspect is uh, what we call as affective domain. Affective domain is how you talk with the patient, uh, the communication skills and uh, 
the ethics ethics in medical uh, field so we teach them all this and 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 also the most important thing is attitude so we call it at core so attitude ethics and communication these are very important aspects of medical education nowadays and we are doing that coming to the next question sir uh, everyone is going to ask you the same question if uh, he is taking the interview uh, how is the institute dealing with the current covid-19 pandemic they could uh, mm. shed some light on that yes uh, we were declared as dedicated covid hospital and uh, we are uh, out of uh, uh, five there are five medical colleges in nagpur you know? so gmc is there government medical college then igmc is indira gandhi medical college and there is aims and there is a, a new college which has come up now make a make a group a medical college that's a make a group yes and uh, ours medical there are five medical colleges and all five medical colleges are dedicated covid hospital we have uh, we uh, till now we had 230 beds reserved for uh, covid patients out of which 30 beds we have created uh, for icu care intensive care and uh, during first wave and then the second wave as we all know second second wave was worse than the first wave uh, all our beds were full no patient uh, could get beds and oxygen uh, beds were scarcity and uh, patients were dying on streets you know all those things so during this uh, peak of these two waves uh we saw and then we realized what more we can do and for that we have uh, thought of extending our bed facility more if any third wave comes i hope third wave does not come but if it comes then we are ready for that uh, we have uh, extended we have a plan to extend our uh, routine oxygen beds as well as uh, icu beds and also we have uh, dedicated one full ward for pediatric covid patients because uh, somebody came up with an idea that the next wave will be a pediatric wave pediatric wave yes so we have created a separate ward for pediatric patients also and this is how we are dealing with we have also ordered uh, we have a liquid oxygen plant we have uh, the, those jumbo cylinders which we call as mgps system but even then we saw that uh, the oxygen was uh, in short supply during this second wave and therefore we have ordered uh oxygen generation plant which generates oxygen okay. from air from air so that gen- that plant is not dependent upon anybody and uh, this is how we are now uh, we are we have thought of dealing with uh, any any wave any possible wave uh, this is very well planned sir uh, we uh, as a nation together and as a, uh, people in general hope that the third wave doesn't come yes. in india as well as abroad yes. so Coming to the next question, sir, uh, could you shed some light on uh, what do you think uh, COVID has affected about the students, like on the students, regarding their studies, regarding their mental health, their physical health? Yes, COVID has definitely had a great impact on medical education. Although we did not suspend classes officially, but in the peaks, no student was here in the campus. obviously because their parents also won't want the children to be here and then we started online classes realizing that they won't come now so we held maximum number of online classes a record number of online classes we had uh, even clinics also we showed them videos we showed them practical videos and also uh, lectures so that is how we continue till now and now we have started on site classes as the wave has gone down the patients number is very less uh, so we have started on site on site classes definitely i would say that they have been affected to a great uh, extent because of pandemic because online teaching is not same as as actual in person teaching uh, in person teaching so they, therefore they suffered definitely plus uh, this is of what we are talking about is undergraduate education mbbs now let me talk about postgraduate education all postgraduate students who are resident doctors were here in the campus they were serving the people along with us along with the senior doctors actually they were the backbone in fact resident doctors those who are doing their md and ms they also suffered a loss uh, suffered a lot because 
they could not pursue their own field of speciality for example uh, a surgeon a surgeon could not uh, one who is doing ms surgery say for example he could not get patients for surgery because there were no non covid patients during that period so last one and a half years there have been very less non covid patients so the, all they learned was about covid and covid while a surgeon has hardly anything to do with covid so this is how they suffered uh, sir uh, also do you think the mental health of the students uh, be it a ug or the pg like for the pg students staying in the hospitals for a very long period of time like 8 16 to 18 hours a day and also for the uc students do you think that uh, attending the online classes for about 6 to 8 hours straight uh, on a like uh, laptop or a mobile phone uh, is serious and um, affect their mental health uh, definitely definitely we came across instances when uh, there was depression amongst them uh and so we tried to uh, boost their morale uh, we made them talk to our doctors say psychologist or psychiatrists and uh, we boosted their morale during all this period uh thankfully no nothing major has happened no major uh, mental problem has occurred so uh, i think it is a great initiative like a uh, great initiative taken by you like uh, giving uh, counseling to the students who uh, want uh, to better their mental health it is a great initiative i feel even the other institutes be it medical institute or engineering institutes uh, i think you are giving examples uh, for to the other institutes as well so coming to the next question sir uh, what do you think your roles and responsibilities are to the students uh, as well as faculty of the institute as as what as well as faculty the yeah. management the teachers yes 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 so our uh, uh, college has 150 mbbs admissions per year uh, and we have 133 post graduate admissions per year along with that we have super specialty courses mch also so uh, there is a large number of uh, students there is a large number of faculty large number of nurses and paramedical staff so being the dean of the institute i have to see to it that uh, there is discipline amongst them and not only discipline during college hours but uh, as we have almost like a township this is like a township our campus around 70 acres of land and uh, here there are 2000 people residing at any moment any given moment so uh, after uh, routine hours also we have i have to see that there is a discipline in the campus uh, so this was a great responsibility and during this covid uh, second wave i shifted to campus uh, before that i was uh, staying in my own uh, residence so i have shifted to the campus and uh, i maintain general discipline teaching learning research uh, we underwent nac inspection you know nac you know, Uh, national accreditation accreditation is so we underwent that inspection recently and uh, we hope to come out with flying colors in that inspection uh, along with that uh, we have installed many general facilities in the campus and that is uh, solar power generation we are generating 800 kilowatt of solar power and we have again placed order for 800 more kilowatts so we will be generating 1600 kilowatts of power uh, that's a green initiative in fact and uh, as as a part of green initiative we have planted trees all around the campus if you come down to the campus if anybody comes down to the campus they can see the change and uh, we have also a state of the art you know, stp and dtp the sewage treatment plant and effluent treatment plant we have uh, installed and they are uh, that is phytoroid based you know phytoroid based so plants clear clean the water yes sir And, and then by 80% of the water is recycled and yes, can yes, be yes, used yes. reused can we use them for gardening for construction purposes and other purposes uh and toilets also we use that water but not for bathing or drinking yes. so we are generating 4 lakh liters at present re- recycling 4 lakh liters per day we have become water surplus previously uh, we had to uh, buy uh, those tankers you know tankers. water tankers yeah so now we are water surplus so these are various initiatives that were taken during my regime as dean 
that is uh, great to hear sir uh, coming to the next question sir Uh, not being in autonomous institute uh, how do you uh, like there are not much facilities to change your curriculum yes uh, uh, at least for the uh, academic part uh, but how do you ensure that academic uh, curriculum is maintained as well as uh, extra curricular activities are uh, like made not mandatory but are given facilities to the students so that uh, they can develop their overall personality and not just the uh, academic skills yeah so we are affiliated to uh, maharashtra university of health sciences that is nhs yes so we follow the curriculum set by them and also uh, under the overall guidance of uh, medical council of india now it is known as nmc national medical commission so we have to follow that curriculum wherever we re- we think that there is a need of change in curriculum we suggest them we suggest mhs to change that part of the curriculum and uh, they do agree at times and they have changed in one or two instances they have added that so having said that about curriculum uh, you asked a very good question and that is about the extra curricular activities uh, we have a students welfare association or students council and that council has uh, teachers and students the body has both teachers and students uh, all around the year we keep on doing some activities uh, for example when a, a student comes here we hold freshers party so freshers party has uh, in fact uh, a very good effect on the newcomers newcomers where they get acquainted with their seniors or immediate uh, seniors that is second year as we know that uh, the second year students do the most ragging of first year students so we want them to mix together as early as possible when they come and uh, i am proud to say that our uh, uh, campus is totally ragging free uh, so that is one then we do annual fest and that fest is known as josh and there are various activities in that uh, annual fest uh, cultural programs sports activities arts exhibition etc etc so all students take part as i told you it's all inclusive yes and uh, then we hold ganpati festival then saraswati puja so all these things we celebrate and all students take part wholeheartedly in those celebrations and also at the end of their curriculum at the end when they are going out they, when they become interns you know we have to do, they have to do one year internship so during that internship we hold a graduation ceremony graduation ceremony because uh, the university is in nashik so everyone cannot go to nashik for graduation so therefore we hold our own graduation ceremony and uh, thereby we continue this activities throughout the year in some or the other way uh, that is great to hear sir uh, like uh, uh, you are giving students the chances for uh, oral personality development and not yes. just giving them the academic skills required yes so next question i think will be a bit nostalgic for you uh, being coming from a uh, few other institutes Uh, when you first came to NKP Salve Institute of Medical Sciences, uh, what was your vision for the institute, and how far uh, you have uh, like, uh, evolved in uh, implementing uh, the visions you have you had while uh, joining the institute? Yes, uh, when I joined the institute in 2002, coming from a big institute like Government Medical College Nagpur, where I had a full-fledged department with resident doctors and so many patients. when i came to this department it was like a shock to me because this department this institute was just developing that time there were no pg students no resident doctors and uh, when i joined the institute there were hardly any facilities in my department that is radiology and uh, you know radiology has become very important now this patient knowledge. patient care so from one x ray machine and one ultrasound machine that was also black and white ultrasound machine uh, i acquired machines after machines so color doppler then many more x ray machines then computer radiography digital radiography ct scan machine mri scan machine mammography machines so uh, uh, we i could persuade the management to invest in this department and they very graciously they did that they they gave me free hand to develop the department and uh, i developed the department then we we applied for post graduation 
and we got post graduate. We have now nine MD seats in radiology per year. So, uh, having done that, then when I shifted to dean as a dean, then I had to take care of all the departments. And uh, uh, what we did, we got the 150 seats, uh, the MBBS 150 MBBS. seats. We got them recognized by MCI. They were permitted before. There is a process called first they are permitted. Then after five years, they are recognized. So I got them recognized. And uh, then we applied for more uh, postgraduate seats. So now I have told you we have 133 postgraduate seats now. Uh, apart from that, other uh, research, we uh, form, formulated a research policy. And in that research policy, what we realized was that the faculty and the students were not doing much of research. So we inculcated that culture in the faculty and the student for research. And we started giving them incentives for research. Uh, the, the management sanctioned uh, 20 lakh rupees per year per annum for research only as incentives. So we started giving them incentives for doing research. Even undergraduate students, those who are doing MBBS, they started going for there is something called as uh, short term studentship that is STS. So STS is a, a ICMR project. So ICMR wants to uh, wants the undergraduate students to do research. So they are given STS projects for two months, and the ICMR pays them ten thousand rupees for that. So that is how they uh, promote research. We started our own STS, that is NKP STS. So those who did not get ICMR uh, STS, we we gave them NKP STS, and we started giving them five thousand rupees for that project. So thereby we saw that there was a huge jump in number of uh, research paper projects, paper. research projects and paper published. So that's how we promoted that. Actually, sir, uh, going to be honest, like uh, this was going to be my next question. Uh, like, uh, what were the things? Uh, what are the things you are promoting uh, to uh, ensure students that they are taking part in the research? But actually, you answered that. So uh, join the question, sir. Uh, can we see? Uh, doing uh, like the councils medical council of india uh, making it mandatory for, for students in ug and pg to take part in uh, research project and at least publish one paper uh, in their uh, ug or pg curriculum yes uh, mci earlier now nmc they have made it compulsory for a postgraduate student yes. that is what we call as ppp model ppp model is in the first year, they have to present a poster in a conference. That is poster P. Then uh, in the second uh, year, they have to present a paper. That is second P. Present a paper in a conference. Oral presentation. And the third is publication. So PPP. So uh, at, at the last, the, the student has to publish one paper. Or at least they, he should have sent to a journal, if not published. Because publication is always not possible. Either. So at least there should be evidence that he has sent for publication. And unless he does these three things, PPP, he is not allowed to appear for MD or MS exam. Yeah. So this model is working since last few years. For UG, there is no compulsion for research at present. There is no Can compulsion. we see that coming in, like uh, in the coming in, years, can we see that uh, at least in, the final year students? In fact, you have given me a very good idea. We also will write to NMC or MHS and uh, try to make it compulsory for undergraduates to uh, go for research. Uh, also, sir, uh, what, like, what are your views on uh, India not having uh, up to mark research, even though we are having the like, large number of uh, population, at least uh, like in the medical sciences as well, we do not have enough number of researchers as foreign institutes uh, have. So, could you shed you some know, light on your... Uh, yeah, you know, uh, in India, there are two issues. One is uh, from uh, on the side of uh, the person and another is uh, on the side of management, say, or for government. So, uh, first is inner motivation to do research. Here in a medical college, a teacher or a student, they have so many things to do. You know, teaching, learning, and all those things. Uh, exams, then, so, uh, they, they think that research is not that important and there is no inner motivation to do that, number one. Number two, 
those who want to do research they really do not know how to go for it uh, they need proper guidance for research and there is no funding there is no funding that is one of the major mm-hmm. i am comparing i am comparing with the uh, foreign institutes developed developed countries so there is a lot of fund there uh, but having said that i think that if a, a good idea comes to a, a faculty or a doctor a good idea and then he has to go to the incubation center we call it incubation center so in incubation center that idea has to develop by discussing with people discussing with experts so in that incubation center the idea develops and once that idea develops he has to do a, a pilot project on that uh, idea and he has to show that this idea can work and if he can do that then probably the funding agencies will fund that fund so this is how it should be done but it is not always done that way that is my personal opinion and there are various agencies who fund uh, research in india icmr hai then csir hai dst hai there are various and there is one more thing as you know uh, many major innovations in medical field have been done in collaboration with engineers mm-hmm. yeah so all the equipments that we see today are because of engineers those who have developed a doctor a physician can give them idea uh, for example a ct scan hai koi doctor thodi na bana sakta ct scan hai mara hai so that idea has to be given to them and then they develop that idea and that i have realized because i do a lot of collaborative research i myself have done uh, i am interested in artificial engineering uh, artificial uh, intelligence so uh, we i worked with uh, engineers and we developed uh, some uh, protocol for uh, Uh, brain tumors and brain pathology so that was uh, two papers have been published and uh, this is how the research has to be done so one idea go for that talk to biomedical engineers and if you can create even one simple instrument which can help patients that can go for patenting so patent is the ultimate in research so this is how it should be done so that is how we we do sensitize uh, our doctors for that Uh, that that was very nicely answered sir uh, coming to the next question uh, what would you like to uh, tell people uh, that they may not know about your institute like they may not uh, get to hear it uh, like uh, see it on your website or uh, not even the newspapers Do yeah you have some insights about the institutes yeah now i can tell you that uh, our institute is 30 31 year old now and in 31 years we have established our institute as an academic institution producing uh, healthcare professional who are sensitive to the society's needs and this is what we teach them every education every research has to have uh, a a beneficial point for the society if i acquire knowledge and uh, i am not helping the society then that knowledge does not mean anything so this is what we teach them always they are the ambassadors of uh, future the health india. future india so this is what we teach them and i am very proud to tell you that many students leave government seats and come to our institute and join our institute so that is how it is the quality of education i feel uh, is up to the mark like about the mark which uh, the councils have set uh, for your institutes so yes. which is uh, ah, great or, reason or hospital is nabh accredited which hardly few medical colleges may be having medical colleges don't go for nabh such a huge hospital we have uh, 1340 beds including uh, critical care so such a huge hospital which is equivalent to say uh, 15 or 20 small hospitals so that we have got nabh accredited now nac is coming in. so uh, we keep on going for these are not mandated by mci okay. mci mci does not uh, make it compulsory to go for nabh or nac but we have done it on our own to improve the quality of processes okay uh, coming to a last question for the day sir uh, any suggestions you would like to give to the aspiring students yes uh, my message to aspiring students is if you choose medical profession choose it wisely because it's a very long uh, uh, 
curriculum uh, and uh, they have they should be ready to devote their uh, heart soul and mind into patient care and uh, my idea is uh, my i will tell them not to think medical profession as a business it's a noble profession and it should be a noble profession so that's very uh, like plainly answered sir in very plain words you did not uh, made the students go complex with your uh, answers so thank you so much sir for joining with us on our program thoughts on education today for taking our time out of your busy schedule thank you thank you thank you thank you so much sir thank you